My childhood was an unusual one in that I've got parents from two different cultures, uh, England and Japan. And that blend of cultures I think has been useful for me in understanding uh, empathy, different points of view, and how you can probably value the difference rather than get annoyed by it. But it was good fun. You know, I moved from Japan to Australia when I was five, and in those days, in the late 60s, there weren't that many Asian looking kids around, so it was uh, quite, an, quite an eye opener for me. I run a company called The Learning Company, and it's interesting in the sense that we're a, um, a custom instructional design and delivery firm. Now people go, what does that mean? If I can summarise it, our job's to make other people and their products look good. So we'll write training programs, and not, not necessarily always training programs, it could be a learning program in the sense it could include coaching, it could include online work, it could include experiential stuff. But the job is to create it so that people learn more easily. Rather than having to force fit themselves into something that may or may not work, we write something specifically for their environment. And it allows us to focus on what we call the three S's, short term, sustainable and significant. We need to give them something that they can use immediately. If we do that, they're going to use it. If we give them something that's going to work for their organisation, become sustainable, so you don't need us anymore. And the last one is, all of our clients will use one of our techniques that'll create a significant outcome for them. And if I can turn that around so that one of the guys uses a sales technique that closes a deal for 200 grand that they didn't have before, it's paid for the training. If we do that, we're doing our job well. I also work as a, an MC and I'm on the speaking circuit. That's a whole lot of fun. It's, it's probably 40 to 50% of my personal practice now. Um, working in conferences is, is not dissimilar. It's about helping people understand and learn from the speakers. So a lot of the time I'm used as a link presenter. So one speaker says one thing, we'll have to link it into what the next speaker is going to be talking about to create that sort of segue. But it's not work. I'm having a lot of fun in that environment and I do get to interview some pretty amazing people. And the ones that come to mind are not only Australians like uh, the current Governor General Sir Peter Cosgrove, um, but uh, also worldwide influences like um, uh, Sir Richard Branson, uh, Dr Condoleezza Rice, uh, former New York City Mayor um, Rudy Giuliani, um, Prime Ministers from not only Australia around the country. You know, what, what's interesting, they're still people and they have a really interesting perspective and it's about extracting that perspective and giving it to the audience, but it's a lot of fun. The advice I'd give to entrepreneurs I think is to be really clear on what it is that you want to be doing. And I know that sounds funny in one sense because a lot of entrepreneurs say, what will make money? If you work from that point of view, although that's sensible in one sense, it becomes unsustainable. If you say, say something along the lines of, what am I passionate about? What am I going to enjoy so that I don't actually have to work? It will be play, it will be fun, it will be what I live for. Then go, does that make me money, all right? So I think a lot of entrepreneurs force fit themselves into a business because it seems to be a good business opportunity. And although that can be good, it's often hard to sustain. So my advice to entrepreneurs is to be very clear on what it is that they want to do to start off with. The next point there is to make sure you know as much about it as you can and then create something that's different. It doesn't need to be that much different. It just needs to be different from everybody else. Probably the, the guy I uh, respect that's made the biggest amount of change for me, two people. One was my primary school headmaster, who took this little half Asian kid and said, you know what, you can string two words together and you can do anything you like. So he's the guy that got me started in debating and public speaking, which is what I do now. Now, obviously your parents are as well, but um, as far as other people, there's a gentleman known as, uh, whose name is Tom Moore. Now, in IT circles, people might know him as being the then M in a company called DMR. Now Tom was a worldwide executive, global executive, ran DMR Europe. But at six o'clock every night, he would go home, right? He would go home because his family was important. And he'd say, if it's really urgent, by the way, ring me at eight after I've had dinner and I'll talk with you. But at six o'clock, I'm going home. And he instilled in me that somebody who ran a, a billion dollar business, basically, could get work-life balance right. And that's really important. The way I give back is not just in charitable donations, although we do that, I give back in time. So if somebody rings me up out of the blue and asks for my time, I'll give it to them. Absolutely, even if it's a telephone call or a face-to-face. -face. Um, I do a lot of pro bono work for organisations um, uh, in giving my time up in those environments. I do a lot, lot for the Starlight Foundation as an example, as an MC. 
When you see people putting in a lot of effort, you want to give some effort back. It exposes you to a different perspective and that's the bit that you can gain as well as an entrepreneur or a business person.